everyone. My name is Tony Burke. I'm from datacenteroverlords.com, and you can find me on Twitter at tburke, that's T-B-O-U-R-K-E. And uh, right now we're going to do a quick little bit on traditional versus cloud-native applications. So as we are transitioning into the traditional virtualization world, into the cloud world, one of the things that we're seeing is uh, uh, the way that applications are written uh, are being written differently. So on the left here we have traditional applications, um, sometimes referred to as pets, and then um, on the right side we have cloud native applications, and, and they're fundamentally different in how they're architected. So they both typically make use of load balancers, which is right here. So when new users come in from the internet here, they hit the load balancer and then they'll get directed to a server. Now there's one thing we almost always turn on on load balancers traditionally, and that's persistent, also known as server sticky. Uh, or affinity or something like that. So that keeps a user, this guy right here, little stick figure, tied to a specific server, in this case, the server on the left. Now the reason why we do that is most applications are written in what, uh, or most tra traditionally most applications have been written in what we call a stateful manner. So uh, sometimes referred to as the shopping cart problem. So if this user, has a shopping cart, and let's say this is some sort of web store application. Here's a little shopping cart. And uh, he puts an item in that shopping cart. That shopping cart is only going to exist on that particular server. So that's why we need server sticky. We need to keep that user tied to that specific server because uh, the items in that shopping cart are only stored in that particular server. This is known as a stateful application. Um, and the problem here is that each server maintains its own individual state with the user. So that's why we have to keep sending users to that particular server. Now, if that server were to die, if we had a some sort of uh, server failure here, of course the load balancer would detect the failure of the server because load balancers typically will do health checking and they will direct traffic to an available server that is surviving. Now the problem there is that their shopping cart will be empty. Now most applications um, aren't shopping carts these days, of course there are a bunch, but um, this, man, this may manifest itself in other ways. For example, if you have to log in to any given website, if you, were to be, if you were sent to a different server, if that application was stateful, you'd have to re-log in, and that uh, results in a negative user experience. It also means I can't really dynamically adjust the number of servers that I have running at any given time, because um, if I have to switch a user to another server, um, for example, if I, if I kill off a server, then um, I'm going to have to, um, you know, to tolerate a, a negative user experience. Cloud native applications, on the other hand, are written in a fundamentally different way. They are known uh, colloquially as stateless applications, but I think a better term would be a shared state application. So um, they'll typically also use load balancers, but these load balancers don't need to be as fancy. They can be just layer four load balancers and they can, um, they can skip uh, sk a sticky. So there's no sticky. So I'll draw a sticky, server sticky. So we don't need that. So a user comes in from the internet, hits the load balancer, and the load balancer can send that user request at any given moment to any of these servers because the servers have a shared state. So this web application, or this cloud native application, will have a shared state. So if the user puts an item, uh, if this were a shopping cart, if the user puts an item in one of these shopping carts, it automatically gets added to the other servers as well. So these servers will have known what's known as a shared state. Now there's any number of um, mechanisms that allow this to happen. Um, sometimes it's a backend database server, sometimes it's a, um, a shared uh, storage space maintained between the servers. There's really a couple different ways you can do it and some of the, some of the web frameworks will allow you to do this. Um, it is um, considered, this is considered to be the superior way of doing applications for a couple of reasons. Um, one, when we, um, especially when Amazon first came out, um, the, the virtual machines that you created, the instances, were on shaky ground, so to speak. So we're on traditional applications, we rely on VMware, and things like vMotion and HA and DRS 
to make sure that the servers are nice and stable and that, that they have their uh, the resources that they need. And if a server were to have a failure, it would, the VM would get vMotioned. So in the traditional application world, the virtual machine and the application are very tightly intertwined. And state is individual. On a cloud native application, um, in, the, in the cloud world, especially in the beginning, the, the VMs were, or the, uh, the infrastructure was considered unstable. So you had to make sure that you built your application so that uh, no one given VM, um, you, you could never trust that a VM would be around at any given moment. So what that allows us to do um, is we rely less on features like vMotion. In fact, um, if any of these servers were to die, Back to my red here. If that server were to die, no problem. The load balancer just continues sending traffic to the surviving servers. Um, the user has no idea that anything happened. They don't have to re-log in. They don't lose their shopping cart or something like that. So none of the, all of the session information from the user is shared amongst all the servers. Um, one big advantage for that is elasticity. So in a traditional application, if I have uh, three back to my black ink here. Um, go to blue. If I have, for example, three web servers, so these are the web servers that I have running or application servers, um, and I have a load balancer, which I typically will. If I have a sudden surge in demand, I'm going to have to add servers. Now the problem with that is that um, up until I had that surge in demand, the load balancer should load balance about 33% to each server of the original trio. And when I add rapidly add to new servers, it's going to take a while for these guys to ramp up because only new users are going to be sent to these new web servers. Remember, we've got typically in traditional applications, we've got sticky. So if we do have sticky turned on, the existing users are still going to be crammed onto these three servers. Now, we may get to a degraded state because they're running um, over capacity. And just because I added these three new servers, existing users are not going to be transferred to these, uh, to these servers unless I kill off these old servers, and that's going to result in a negative experience. Also, what happens when that demand, that surge in demand um, goes away, and I start having to call servers, especially if I'm on Amazon, I'm paying per, per use. So I don't want to have VMs spun up for any longer than I have to. So um, again, that, involve, that involves a negative user experience. So cloud native applications uh, do things uh, very differently, like we mentioned before. Um, state is shared, so in that case, we don't need sticky. So, so no server sticky. State is shared across all of these servers. Go back to blue. So let's say I've got an original three servers. I have a sudden uptick in demand. I add three more servers or three more uh, VMs, and then immediately traffic is divided amongst them equally. So I've got all of my traffic divided amongst all of these three servers. Now I have a drop in demand. I don't need all these servers. I can immediately kill those servers and the users will be sent to the remaining three servers and, I, and without any interruption in the user experience. No one has to re-log in. No one loses their shopping cart. So this is the primary difference between traditional applications and virtual applications, or traditional applications and cloud native applications. Um, it's just the way the applications are architected. Now, you can take a traditional application and refactor it, and, and the term refactoring means we're going to change the underlying code or change the underlying infrastructure without changing the function of the site. So we can move it into this, into this cloud-native uh, style. Um, really, if you're developing applications, you should be developing them as cloud-native. It doesn't, it's not that difficult um, to start out that way. But it may involve a new a new tool set or a new tool chain. It may involve a new skill set for the developer. Um, so that's the primary difference between cloud native applications and traditional applications. Also, sometimes referred to as pets versus cattle.
Again, my name is Tony Burke. You can finally find me online at datacenteroverlords.com or you can tweet at me at tburke, that's at T-B-O-U-R-K-E. Thank you for watching.